I wanted to explain myself, but um, it's my duty to keep you entertained, so I gave you a video of me shaking my camera around with like 10 effects applied to it. So this should keep you pretty happy while I talk. And I felt I needed to explain myself because this video you're about to watch was originally meant for our Web Element a Day series, but I got too busy and <coughs> lazy and I couldn't get it out to you in time. So here it is. Hope you enjoy and let's get to it. Hello people, my name is Steven and welcome to another Pixel for Life video tutorial. Today is day 5 of our Web Element a Day series, well short series. Um, today we are going to be creating a image slider and I'm sure you've seen these, they're on a lot of modern websites now. It just has a big, you know, an image on the top with arrows to the left and to the right and then circles on the bottom to show like a navigation position. Um, very common, but it's really nice. So today we're, we are going to be creating one. So if you're not sure what it, what it is, you're going to be learning. I'm going to be honest, I have not created this yet, so there might be some mistakes but um, you'll, you'll live. You'll... So, as usual, I like to get some kind of dimension, some proportions, because I don't have exact sizes. I'm going to hide that progress bar because it's sticking out a little too far. And I'll hide all of these. Alright, so I want to get some kind of dimensions. So to do that, I'm just going to draw out uh, a rounded rectangle. And Oops, not a rounded rectangle, just a normal one. Normal rectangle. And I just want to get some kind of like image. If you have your website layout then you can just draw out the rectangle to the correct sizes but I'm just gonna go with something small like this because it's not the actual shape of this that matters it's gonna be the buttons that you're gonna be able to take and use on your own websites and all that so I'm just gonna quickly give this a color maybe a uh, light blue something like that and then that's good alright so now that we have the basic shape we can start creating the buttons and giving it the overall look that we're going after now I want to keep mine pretty simple because that seems to be the direction that websites are going through. A very minimalistic, modern looking, clean, um, stuff like that. So to quickly do that I want to give this a, uh, a stroke of one pixel and we're going to make it white and then a drop shadow size of, let's go with two, distance zero, spread 100 and then we're going to make that a dark gray. And we can always tweak this later, get it a little bit different, but this is just going to be our base image. And let's add an inner shadow just to make this a little more interesting to look at. Something like this, and then bring down that, bring down the opacity. Good enough. All right. So my plans for the buttons are to have something that kind of looks like it's wrapping around from the back going to the front, just so it uh, gives it some kind of depth. So I'm not really too sure how to do that, but I know that's going to have to be two different sections. One for the covering the front, and then one that's going to be behind the image. Uh, it kind of looks like it's behind the image, but it's not really. So to do that, what I want to do is just get the basic shape, which is going to be something like this, around a rectangle with a 4 pixel radius, and I'm going to delete the effects, and I'm just going to give it a quick color that we'll modify later. Alright, so now that we have that, we can begin working on the wrapping effect. So I'm just going to scale this down just to make it a little bit wider, <coughs> and then maybe move it back a little bit. And now quickly I'm just going to try and see how to do this. Maybe we can do a ellipse tool, draw out something like this, and then we'll move it over into place. And then I'm going to duplicate it down here. And then let's see, let's move it behind everything. Kind of like that. And now what I want to do actually is round off this back edge. So I'm going to go to this rounded rectangle tool, the green one, and then grab the plus, make one point in the center, and then click and drag this out slightly. Something like that. So now you can see that's a little bit rounded. That should give it a nice look. I'm going to drag these two white layers to behind the image. <clears throat> and this bottom one, right here, I don't want that one sticking down so far, so I'm going to bring it up. 
something like that and maybe this one can go down I don't know we'll mess with it later uh, what I want to do actually is make this a little bit darker that way you kind of get the idea that it's a shadow I'm gonna do the same thing here for that other one and there we go that's pretty much the basic effect now we can uh, actually this top area looks a little bit funky so I want to fix that right here let's see why is there hmm let's go to the minus tool and I'm subtract that and this one right here so maybe that'll look a little bit better and just center that some more and then let's see okay that's looking better maybe down one more pixel ah, hard to decide I'll go with this and then I'm going to select all three of these layers and drag it out a little bit more so it's more so you can see more of that shadow all right so now that we have that we can begin stylizing this <clears throat> so what I want to do is go to this layer here add a gradient overlay or first let's steal a color we're going to steal this screen that we use for the other buttons so I'm just going to click and drag to that double click this gradient overlay and let's try giving this zero reverse it and go to overlay something like this and then let's give it a stroke of one pixel but we're going to change it to a gradient stroke something like that and let's see if we can do inside and change the blending mode to overlay no doesn't work out let's do gradient normal and then for the colors we're going to do a dark green so something like this so this side is going to be dark green this side is going to be a little bit lighter so let's just click here and see what that looks like zoom out and not too bad alright so now I want to give it a little bit of depth so let's try adding a bevel line and a boss a bevel line and a boss effect to that let's try I'm not liking that let's try inner shadow and I'll bring the distance to 2 so now um, my settings are going to be different because I messed with my defaults so what I have is distance of 2 choke of 100 size of 0 and I'm going to change the color to white and it's going to be white on that tip there maybe we can even mess with the angle let's try hmm let's go with this we'll just go with the normal right over here and we're low, we'll lower that opacity and we'll do a inner glow and let's make that black and see how that looks change it to normal and size we'll bump it up a little bit bring down that opacity so then you can kind of see it's a little bit darker back here um, let's see what center looks like that's not too bad let's zoom out and see what that looks like oops zoom out and that looks quite nice I'm very happy with it and let's see if there's anything else let's, let's start adding the arrows and see if there's any other details that we'd like to put and it looks like my background got moved better alright so let's add the arrow I'm going to zoom in and going to grab actually maybe we can actually grab this the arrow from our download button nah I'm not going to cheat let's just redo it let's create our own arrow <clears throat> to do that, what I'm going to do is draw out a rectangle like this, and then I am going to go to my path selection tool, select it, control T, and I'm going to hold down shift and rotate it 90 degrees, hold down alt and shift, and I'm going to drag it down like this, and then click on this cutaway uh, button right here select both uh, objects and click combine so there we have an arrow very quick and efficient and now I want to grab this okay I'm not going to steal I keep wanting to steal from our other things but I've done it too much uh, I'm just going to take that rotate it 90 degrees scale it down and we'll bring it like this and I got an idea for this I kinda want to make it look like this right side is dug into the shape a little bit. Let's see if we can accomplish that. 
I'm going to give it an inner shadow and the distance is going to be one take off the uh, global lighting I'm going to put it on zero and bring down the choke bring up the size a little bit lower that opacity and then let's add a stroke one pixel go to overlay bring down the opacity and let's see how that looks not bad not bad let's uh, let's change the color of this a little bit I'm gonna click on this green and I'm just gonna lighten it something like this and I'm not liking the blur on that inner shadow so I'm gonna get rid of this I'm gonna bring the choke all the way up and bring down the size to zero and let's change this color to a little bit lighter so what I'm going to do is um, bring this, uh, add the inner shadow black. Let's bring that up. Have an outer glow. I'm just going to leave it at the default. And then I'm going to lower the opacity here. And then the stroke will lower that opacity too. Let's see what no stroke looks like. I kind of like no stroke. That looks a little bit cleaner. Let's see what a white one looks like. With the opacity all the way up. Yeah, I'm going to go with no stroke. And that's not too bad. Uh, the edges actually look like they're kind of fading away. Let's see if we can do this on a gradient. We'll go from black to white. And that's that looks pretty nice. I'm going to lower the outer glow opacity a little bit. And there we go. Let me zoom out. And I like the way that looks. So just so we are clear on the styles, I have an inner shadow. And here's my settings. Uh, black opacity of uh, will make it easy change it to 50 distance of one choke of 100 outer glow screen opacity of will change to 50 and then the default color size of 5 and then a stroke right here with the gradient from black to white overlay opacity of 45 and angle is 0 all right so now that we have that what we can actually do is go to these layers here, these circle layers, and I'm going to select this one with my path selection tool, select it, control C, go to this layer, and control V. Then we can just delete this one. And then I'm going to go to, uh, go to that layer, let me hide all the other ones, and I'm going to draw out a rectangle like this, and make sure it's on the punch out. So now it's punched out whatever, uh, whatever the rectangle is covering. So that way, what I can do is drag these layers to the top. And that didn't work out, did it? Um, I'm going to select this, control C, go to this layer with the circles, control V, and then select that punch out. There we go. Then delete that. And now I can have everything above that image layer. And then we can group that together and change it arrow right right or we'll just change it to arrow now we can just get started on our buttons once we finish the circles down here I'll change it to a smart object and duplicate it over to the left side so these button these circles are just gonna be really quick I'm going to create my uh, ellipse tool hold down shift draw that out real quick and it's gonna be two colors one is gonna be the normal normal colors and then another one's gonna be a different color that shows um, what item we're on so the normal ones are going to be white so I want to add a quick inner shadow and maybe we'll do it at 90 degrees just from the top to the bottom like that do a stroke of one pixel um, actually let's make it white and then we'll do a drop shadow size of 2 spread all the way up distance of 0 and then we'll lower that opacity way way down control H to hide that it's not hiding it let's zoom out and see what that looks like uh, it looks kinda jaggedy and ugly let's remove that drop shadow we'll make this stroke a dark gray something like that let's add a Let's see if we can do an inner glow. Change it to black. Normal. And bump up the size and lower the opacity. 
that way it has a little bit of depth. Now that button might be a little bit too large, so I want to control T and just scale it down a little bit. Good enough. All right, now let's um, let's duplicate it and let's change the color to a green color, something like this, maybe lighter. And then for this inner inner glow, I'm gonna change that to white and then have it on overlay bring up that opacity and then have an outer glow and we'll make it normal and green as well bump up the size something like that so it looks like it's glowing then the inner glow will bring down that opacity a little more all right good enough. Uh, let's just take off the outer glow I can't decide on that and then let's see this inner shadow let's make it white and we'll reverse the angle to negative 90 and then nah, we'll just leave it at that you guys can modify it if you'd like um, let's zoom in and then I'm going to right click this convert to smart object and then just bring it over bring it over select all four of them and align the centers group it together and we'll name this dots and then this arrow we'll right click that convert to smart object hold down alt and shift and drag it over control T flip it horizontal and let's line it up like that very nice so now we can just bring our dots over to the far right side line that up a little better and that's all there is to it that's going to finish this off let's name this image select all these layers group them and name that image slider so there you have it uh, that's gonna finish off this tutorial and this day so I thank you very much for watching see you next time